Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to derive Bernoulli's equation which is a central equation for fluid mechanics. So let's get started. As I said we are dealing with fluids, so what makes more sense than to have a pipe? And we do have a pipe. Maybe we have an entrance to our pipe like this. It continues to some length and then it takes an upward turn. An upward turn like so. And then continues for a while again. And it is closed. Now, of course, you can imagine that this pipe is uh, still continuing. Like, there, there are dashed lines here. These, goes, these go to somewhere. Because it wouldn't make sense to have a pipe uh, chilling out by itself. No, it is connected to something. Maybe this is one of the pipes that carry water to your house. Okay? Think of it like that. And t talking about water, let's say that inside of our pipe, there is water. And, yeah, I couldn't draw it in lights, but anyways, think of it as a pipe with water inside of it. Pretty standard, right? And let's say that this is our height. This is our height y. Let's not use y. Let's use h is equal to zero. And the height of the first entrance is going to be called h1. And notice I... Uh, measure the height from the center of the entrance and the second entrance's height will be called h2 now the water uh, when it passes through the first entrance it will be traveling with a speed of v1 and not to forget it this uh, area will be a1 the cross-sectional area of the first entrance and when we come to the second entrance there will be a velocity 2 and of course, the second cross-sectional area is going to be named area 2, A2. And I also want to mention that there might be some forces acting on our, uh, on our water. For example, if we consider this much of water, this volume, uh, so basically this means we take all of this, and if we consider that guy moving through this pipe and all the way coming to here, so let me erase this. It comes to here, perhaps. And imagine that we have the same volume. Okay, so these volumes, V1 and V2, are equal. Well, there might be some forces that act, act on our mass, of, uh, our water mass, our mass of interest. So perhaps the water that is coming from the behind is pushing our, uh, is pushing our front with a force of F1. And perhaps the ones in front of it, when we consider the second case, they are pushing it be, uh, to the back, okay? Or they might be pushing from the back as well to accelerating. It doesn't matter. But there will be some forces acting on them. And think of these as the net forces that act on our mass, our water. So what I want to do is I want to derive some equation that relates that relates velocities, heights, and uh, and the density of our liquid, of our fluid. And this density I call rho. This is the Greek word that we use for density. You could use d, but I prefer to use rho. Now, the way I will start my derivation is by considering the conservation of energy. The conservation of energy tells me, and of course, since I'm using conservation of, conservation of energy, I assume uh, no friction. I neglect frictional forces. Uh, the conservation of energy will give me E1, the energy at the first point, is equal to E2, the energy at the second entrance. Now, for our energy, we will have, since we are de dealing with mechanical energy, we will have a kinetic energy term, K K1+, plus, a potential energy term, which we use the subscript U, I mean the letter U to denote it. And then there might be a work done, right? There is a force here. So there might be a work done on our uh, water, mass of water. So we denote it with V1, work one. And on the other side, similarly, we have K2 plus U2 plus V2. V2. So let's just make our substitutions for these guys on the new page. So here we go. We had a kinetic energy one term. We had K1. Well, K1 is going to be, using the formula for kinetic energy, it is going to be 1 over 2 m 
velocity squared. Well, for the first case, we have v1. That is how we define the velocity. So we have v1 squared. Plus, we have the potential energy. Well, what potential energy are we dealing with? We are dealing with gravitational potential energy near the surface of the Earth. And for that, I derived the formula in one of my previous videos. You can find it from the cards right now. And using that formula, we know that the gravitational potential energy near the surface of the Earth is mgh, the height. And in that case, that height is h1. Plus, we have a work. Well, what can we say about the work? It is simply going to be force times the distance. Don't uh, think about dot products. Don't We don't need to complicate things. And you might be worried about the direction of the, not the direction of the work, but, you know, is it positive, is it negative? Well, think of it as the force or the distance have it inside of it. So we consider their directions while we write it. So it takes care of it. All right, don't worry. We have the first force then f1 times some distance it should act on and i will call that distance this guy x1 right we consider some volume of water i call that volume of water that corresponding length x1 and similarly we can call the other length the one near the other en uh, entrance we can call it x2 or the ex exit i should call it it's not an entrance. We exit from there. So we have F1 times X1. Right? The distance. Force times the distance will give you the work for our case. This should equal the total energy for the second, uh, for the second situation. So we will have, again, a kinetic energy term, which is 1 over 2 M. But instead of V1, we will have V2 squared plus MGH2 plus F2X2. And notice I use the same M in bo on both sides because I said here that we are dealing with the same volume of equal, uh, same volume of water. This is called the continuity equation, continuity idea. This basically means that if the uh, volume of liquid, the volume of fluid that enters is different than the volume of fluid that exits, well, we can't have a proper flow, right? For a flow, what exits should uh, have, so what enters should exit. Ex so the, what goes out is equal to what comes inside, which means V1 is equal to V2, so mass 1 is equal to mass 2, which we can just call mass. And also, let's even call this V1 and V2 V. All right, so we have this, we got this, but I don't want mass because measuring the mass would be dif difficult and it is an arbitrary choice that we made. I mean, you could have considered this part of it. You could choose all of this water and you can do your calculations based on those. And I can choose a smaller or a greater section. Well, no, we can't make different choices. We can make different choices, but at the end, it shouldn't matter. The result shouldn't change, so we can find something that is independent of mass and volume. And when we say mass and volume, we should think of our friend density. So density is defined as mass over the volume, which means for mass, we can substitute rho times the volume. Well, what will be the volume for our case? The volume will be, if we consider, the, if we consider these parts cylindrical, if they are cylinders, then it is going to be the height, the length, actually, let's not confuse them, length times the area. So we will have, we will have rho a x. And for different situations, we can put the subscripts like so. And I will do that on a new page. So let's just substitute this for mass. We will have 1 over 2 instead of m. I am going to write rho times a times x, but I'm going to write the first one. So I'm going to have rho a1 x1 plus mg h1 then plus. Well, what is force? I know that pressure is equal to force per area. So force is equal to pressure times the area, which means I can write instead of f1, P1, the pressure that we have, 
uh, in the initial entrance times the cross-sectional area, which is A1. Then we have an X1. This is equal to 1 over 2. Instead of M, I am going to write rho A2 X2 because we are considering the second uh, entrance. Then we have the velocity squared. And by the way, I forgot the velocity here. Excuse me. We should have velocity, right? Mass only accounted for these three. And we still have the velocity. It is quite important. Plus, we have mgh2. And then for f2, we will have p1. I mean, I mean, p2, a2, and then an x2. So, I will make a bold claim. And it isn't very bold. You will understand why it isn't very bold. I claim that a1, x1 is equal to a2, x2. Well, why is this correct? Think about this for a while. This is correct because we just said at the beginning that V1 is equal to V2. The volumes are the same and A times X is just a formula, an expression for the volume. Okay. And oh, come on. I didn't substitute for M here. Oh, come on. I should have done that. Excuse me. So let's substitute for M here as well. We will have rho A1 x1 instead of it and here as well we will have let's write it with blue row a2 x2 i am sorry that i forgot it but i did it now so we can simplify by a x10 right we can divide both sides by a1 x1 and a2 x2s will cancel because they are equal which i do we have a1 x1 cancelled we have a1 x1 cancelled they cancel here and as i said a1 x1 is equal to a2 x2 so this this and this cancel as well. And then what do we get as the final result? We get 1 over 2 rho v1 squared plus we have gh1 here. And remember the rho here. I wrote it on the new line because I forgot to substitute for m. We have rho gh1 plus the pressure 1 is equal to 1 over 2 rho v2 squared plus rho g h2 plus p2 and this is actually Bernoulli's equation this is a very powerful equation this can help you to find uh, solutions to a lot of problems in real life and i will actually do a couple of problems in the next videos about this so this is it. We just use conservation of energy to derive Bernoulli's equation, which is central to fluid dynamics. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.